East Northport Jewish Center is proud to present Parasha Poetry with Rabbi Ian Silverman. This week, Parashat Vayachi. Jacob had been there for 70 years. He calls his two grandsons as his time to leave nears. At 147, they're like children to him. In Egypt, he saw clearly, though his eyes now were dim, Menashe and Ephraim would inherit the land. Ephraim would be greater and at his right hand. They'd inherit Canaan when they left Egypt's sand, and Joseph therein would have regions so grand. But Joseph was born of Jacob's first love. Rachel died early, his delicate daughter. He made Joseph promise, as he climbed back in bed, that he'd bury him at Machpelah when he's dead, that place where his grandpa bought for a price, a graveside opened twice more than thrice for Abraham, Sarah, Rebecca, Isaac too, and there he had bid Leah his final adieu. All the fanfare of Egypt at dying, lying in state 70 days of crying, couldn't compare to the simple stone grave alongside his loved ones in that side of the cave. He'd blessed all of his sons and foreseen their tribe's train. He'd foretold they would one day fulfill their true fate. To Joseph and Judah, he gave special mention. Two of the sons that eased, eased so much tension of friction and infighting and years of resentment. They turned years of feuding into years of contentment. In the end, he gathered his legs under the sheets. His end was not painful, but swift and fleet. Gathered to his fathers in spirit, he went, sated and old, seventy souls by his tent. Joseph was now alone with his kin. They wondered if he now his revenge would begin. But he wept for their worry. He saw their great grief that he didn't perceive. They had turned a new re a leaf, but they surely had, and it certainly aided Joseph's anger had truly abated. You thought me wrong, but God changed it around. Now look at the wheat that abounds. Stay here with me and let me protect you. If it wasn't for God, that drought would have wrecked you. Joseph was now up in years, 110 when his time nears. He tells them he loves them. He begs them to stay. But he asks his brothers to promise and say, and when they go back to the promised landscape, they'll take his bones upon their escape. After many generations of hard work and labor, you'll inherit a land of milk and honey. You'll savor. On this touching note, Bereshit ends. Love your children, love your brothers, and make your amends. We started with Abel. We started with Cain. We ended with brothers united again. Next week, the book of Shemot. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you will like it, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and tune in next week for another edition of Parasha Poetry with Rabbi Ian Silverman.